The best late night conservative talk show in America, Black Hands Radio. And listen, there are no people better on the air to give you the best in conservative talk than Sackhead Sean and Sackhead Clan. Uh, and uh, we're working on immigration papers for a certain other guy who happens to work here, too. <laughs> <laughs> for those who are tuning in around the world to the best in late night conservative talk, Sackhead's Radio. The best late night conservative talk show in America. In America. In America. And in this web was a large, I'm pretty sure it was the biggest spider I've ever seen. And welcome to the Sackheads Radio Show live in the SHR Media Network. It is the 15th of February. Well pronounced. 2017. Very well pronounced. <laughs> and for those of you who may be new listening to our show, Sean is from Boston, uh-huh. Massachusetts. Uh-huh. And he has been practicing his English. I have. So his pronunciation of February is because he's actually trying to... I mean, being in radio... People have to be able to understand him. Very, um, so, very, very clear, too. Yes. So we have been working on that. So welcome back, my friend. Welcome back, and thank you. You're welcome. How's I see you? So, by the way, you look very comfortable. I am. I'm actually tonight. I'm back where I belong. You have your, uh, you brought your ballerina shoes. I, I did. Your ballet shoes. Slippers? I did. I, I, <sighs> Slippers. Yeah. Slippers. I'm not trying to offend. I'm hey. sorry. I just, I'm, I'm not... Into that scene. Here's really. the. Here's the. I'm best. trying to. I'm supporting you. No, no, no. I get this. So here's the best part about this. Uh huh. You guys went on this whole ballerina story last week, but oh, where's Sean? He must be doing a ballerina. No, story. no, 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 no. We simply told a story about the fact that look, you're an artist, Sean. Celebrate it, uh, artiste. Yeah, celebrate it. I mean, I look. I love who you are, and it's part of the beauty of the sackheads and of sackhead Sean uh, specifically. And look, I, I celebrate your art and your beauty and your expression. And it's just one more way you do that in addition to bringing joy through your voice and the SHR media realm. So I applaud you. I, look, our listeners applauded you. It was great. We had a great discussion. Mm-hmm. Uh, people were, were very happy to hear that um, you, in fact, express yourself mm-hmm. uh, that way. It was, it was very nice. I don't know. You have this You have this weird view, I think, that we were um, being sarcastic or perhaps being uh, condescending. I don't know. I, I don't know, but I get the feeling that you don't really believe that we're supportive of your dreams. Are you done yet? Uh-huh. Are you sure? <laughs> I don't know. It depends what you're going to say. <laughs> See, Mary, look, Mary applauds you. Yes, So yes. anything that you're about to say that's mean and condescending... And smart asserish. Don't you dare! Mary don't you going, dare pull our listener Mary look, Brockman into this. Who we love so much. You too. Look, and even Ken, even Ken. And by the way, by the way, there was not one racist thing about our show last week. <laughs> the whole thing was <laughs> just just the fact that you sat not in my chair and hit the start one button. One racist thing on our show. Oh, I mean, God. BZ did say the N word. <laughs> <laughs> Num nums? <laughs> no, 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 not num nums. <laughs> Maybe you fast forwarded through that part. I must have, because my phone didn't blow up, which is a little shocking. Well, he was making a he was making a point. Oh, okay. Well, that's okay then. Oh, right, right, because he was using it to prove a point versus using it as a slanderous term. Exactly. So that's okay because it's for educational purposes. Yes. Awesome. Speaking of BZ, uh, he will not be joining us tonight. He's out for his annual breast exam. Um, he will be back uh, next Tuesday on the SHR Media Network for his show, The Berserk Bob Head Ballroom, and then back, of course, with us next Wednesday on the Sackheads Radio Show. You know what's awesome? And I love this. He still says, um, have fun w- with your show. Like, BZ... Uh, hasn't accepted the fact that he's he, whether he likes it or not he's in 
I, I think he's not liking it. Well, I, look, I understand why he's saying that. Right. I, I really do. It's because out of respect. It, it's, it's out of respect. Absolutely. Because, look, he, he is part of the family. Yes. Um, and and we, we love BZ. He's become a, a, very, a very big part of our team. And I don't say that tongue-in-cheek. No. He is a big part of our team. I'm a big part of the team. You're a, yeah, but for a different reason. Right. You're just big uh, part of the, of the team. But, but he's, I think he says that because we started this. Right. So I think that's out of, out of respect. And I, don't get me and wrong. And I appreciate it. I absolutely appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, but he's stuck with us, and he needs to understand that um, sooner rather than later. So we do have a, a, a lot to talk about this evening. Um, one thing I didn't get to talk about, though, because I wasn't here last week, because mm-hmm. um, I was actually still hungover, um, is the fact that the Patriots won the Super Bowl. Now, that's so old news, and nowhere in the programming for tonight is there <laughs> room for that. Nowhere. I'm looking. I'm reading I'm reading it, General Jack Assery uh, of the rank general, introducing Perry, quote-unquote Mason Williams, surprise Clint, uh, in like Flynn. We do wait, have Perry Williams, which I'm excited we do. about. Uh, in like Flynn, wait, oops. Uh, California evacuations and the taste of crow and this batshit crazy world with Sean. Yes. Yeah, no, nowhere in there is there anything about the Patriots. <laughs> uh, I believe under General Jack Assery, that gives me the right to talk about, listen, some of the crap that you've brought up in General JK. Um, <laughs> oh, bye. Pitchers and catchers start today. Let's talk about the A's. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the future. Let's not talk about what happened a few weeks ago. <laughs> But no, actually, um, we I did last week say congratulations to you yes, and you to did. the and to the New England Patriots you on did. the air. And on your behalf, I scolded Mark when he shunned the Patriots and Tom Brady. Well, I said something to the effect of, uh, hang, hang, "Hang on a second, Sean's not here, but his spirit is taking over, and I have to stick up because he's not here." And I went into a mini Sean esque tirade. Oh, in support of you and your team, all red faced and everything. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm kind of proud right now. Yeah, I we, had your back. I, hey, I appreciated that very much. So, um, and by the way, I just finally logged in appropriately and sure, checked. Even even Dave said, "Okay, to be real, Clint did do that." I have no doubt. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Uh, well, I, it, it's hard to argue against the fact um, that we have each other's back. That we have each other's back. Right. Um, and that he's the greatest quarterback of all time. Who, BZ? Uh, I've never seen the man play. Brady. Yeah. Um, look, the man is very talented. But I, 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 I have to stick with Joe Montana. No, and that's fine yeah, because you stuck back then. <laughs> I have to be. Have you seen? <laughs> <laughs> I have to be. <laughs> but you also, you know, you're still excited about Jose Canseco. So I mean, <laughs> actually, that's the look. That's the look. That's not true when you know it. Every year, I'm excited about the A's. No, I, I hate all of the NFL right now. Uh, yeah, I, I, I watched. I literally watched. One NFL football game this year, and that was the Patriots. I watched one Patriots the Super game in the Super Bowl. That was that one That's game. That's all I got to. I watched three football games this year. One Hawaii replay when they when the Hawaii Air Force game went into era, went into overtime. Yep. And the uh, Sheraton Bowl mm-hmm. when Hawaii beat Middle Tennessee. That, literally, that's all the football I watched. That's still more than I watched. Um, yeah, so uh, pitchers and catchers did report, which I'm very excited about. Yes. Uh, spring training is just around the corner. Uh, listen, there's going to be a lot of good teams out there this year. There's a lot of there was a lot of movement in the off season. I'm excited about the Red Sox. They've loaded up on the rotation. Um, you know, it's going to be really hard to see um, how they uh, 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 who they get clutch hitting for with uh, uh, David Ortiz retiring last year. It's a big loss for my team, uh, but I'm excited. I'm really excited to get onto the uh, get onto the dirt and start going. Yeah, look. And we've talked about doing a live show from spring training, right? Because I think are the uh, are the Sox uh, Cactus League also, or are they Orange League? Orange League, Orange League, Orange League. We need to we need to we need to have a conversation with MLB. <laughs> we got to fix some shit. We got to fix some shit. <laughs> uh, we we need we need the Red Sox um, and the A's organizations to be in the same league. I don't fucking care where it is. 
<laughs> they should play at Freedom Fest every year. That, like, would, that should be. <laughs> that'd be outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. I'm, uh, down, I'm down for that. We're making an official request. We, <laughs> the annual Sox Oakland spring training game will take place in <laughs> August, apparently. Um, the annual Boston Oakland Invitational. Invitational. The SHR Media Boston Oakland Invitational. <laughs> I wonder. I know you do. I wonder if we if we You gotta wonder quick because we have a call to make. Okay. I wonder very quickly if we actually made that happen. Like if we were to, to sponsor and by sponsor I mean put our just put our name up and let them cover all the costs. Mm-hmm. Um, a game. An annual SHR game. <laughs> I love how you... And let them cover all the costs. <laughs> Between, but, and we'll let them keep all the profits. You know, we'll just take like... We'll just take like... We'll just take like $10,000 to let them use our logo. <laughs> and it was our idea. So the discussion... <laughs> I, I, I don't know which way to go with this first, because... Okay, so stick with me first and then go with No, this. chat room was also talking about quarterbacks. Um, yes, Mary, we have a poll going. Mary said that we can take the Bengals, but Boomer Esiason was one of the greatest uh, quarterbacks. The poll is Montana or Brady, folks. Uh, but uh, Dan Butcher wins with Ryan Leaf. <laughs> 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 one of the greatest crackhead quarterbacks ever, Ryan Leaf. Oh, uh, you ready to call Mr. Williams? Let's call. Let's, let's call. Let's call Mason. <laughs> Williams, Perry. Ooh, one ringy Ooh. dingy. Ooh, it's Ooh, ringing. It's ringing. This is good. This is. You see how this happens when you're a radio professional, Clint. You're able to get phones to ring. Perry. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, sir. How are you? I am doing just great. Perry Williams is live on the Sackheads Radio Show here on the SHR Media Network. Who you, through the beautiful uh, uh, tendrils. Of Ken McClinton, however, is that she, a racial term? However, again? She, no. We, see, you why do you that. do this, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> Has come to us via the Exceptional Conservative Network, and we'll be joining the Sackheads Radio, uh, the SHR Media Network, rather, uh, um, a couple days a week. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm doing just fine. I'm doing fine. How about you? I'm well. You down uh, enjoying the fine Texas uh, 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 freedoms? Well, actually, like, yeah. You're over there actually, in free America. To, very, had, very jealous. I've had to temporarily give up the the fine Texas freedoms for the uh, oppressive uh, socialist atmospheres of Chicago again. Oh boy! I'm oh back wow! Up to, yeah, I'm back up in Kill City, USA, Chicago, Illinois. Is, is it one of those things that, like, all of a sudden you're released from prison and you go to Texas? Is that like how it feels? Like this ultimate freedom, and then they're like, "Oh, by the way, we made a mistake well, in the paperwork. Back to Chicago." Or is it? Or is it actually really cool because you're like a conservative spy and you go behind enemy lines in, in occupied territory? Because that's how we feel. <laughs> That's exactly how it feels. I remember a couple of years ago when I moved down to Texas, and I didn't think I'd ever see Illinois again, or at least Chicago. And it was felt like I felt like I was free from a prison. And I got <laughs> to Texas, and the attitudes are so different. I don't know if you've ever, ever been to Texas, but I used to tell people that the beauty of Texas was most Texans think of themselves as Texans first. Yep. And Americans second. Yes. And the attitude is so different about how they look at things, you know. So simple things such as owning guns. Down there, you're the oddball if you don't own a gun. <laughs> as the way it should be, right? But what, why don't you have a gun? <laughs> guns are dangerous? When do guns become dangerous? <laughs> and, and then, so unfortunately, I, I ended up back up here. And um, Chicago is a wonderful city. I mean, it really is. It's a beautiful city. It is. And I tell people, the best way to describe Chicago is the city that dares you to live in it. I, I think That's because so many people get killed. What? Oh, my God. You, you have no idea. I was, um, I was down um, yesterday. You probably saw all over the, the news and on Facebook. There was a, uh, a pregnant woman that was live streaming on Facebook, and somebody came up and 
killed the boyfriend and killed the two-year-old and shot her in the stomach. She was pregnant. Yeah. I was yeah. right there on that corner oh. about three minutes before the shooting happened. Oh, it, it is and, uh, oh, oh, it's horrific. It's, it's, it is, it is, this is what happens. And, you know, I have to get political. Of course, this is what this is all about. Yeah, absolutely. This is what happens when, when liberals take over any place. Yep, yep. Because if, if you ever went to the, if you ever came to Chicago and you go to the South and you go to the West Sides, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's, they're like war zones. They're like bombed out war zones. I'm, you've never seen so much helplessness, so much despair in all your life. It, it makes you just want to cry. Just I, to I, look at it. I, I, I absolutely agree. I've actually been to Chicago a few times. And uh, like you said, it actually is quite a beautiful city. Uh, uh, the vast majority of people in Chicago, politics aside, are very, very cool people. Uh, there's a lot of kind of interesting personalities there but you know you have great culture you have good food um a a lot of great things uh but the liberals have just destroyed that city um and it keeps getting worse i mean it's like detroit you know i always tell everyone chicago needs to look at detroit now and that's maybe 10 years down the line at best i you know what and i have to agree with you because you know, when I got to Texas, one of the first things I liked is first, there's no state income tax. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> the second, we, there's no taxes, tax on foods. Uh, the third thing is the state uh, uh, legislature only meets every two years. <laughs> it's like, I'm in heaven. I've been reborn. Well, <laughs> well that's because they actually have to go to work. Um, in between, what? they have to actually work between their legislative uh, uh, sessions. So actually, get to have real jobs. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I got down there, and everybody I worked <laughs> with owned a gun. So I said, "Okay, I'm coming from Chicago. Time for me to go buy a gun." So I went <laughs> to, on my lunch break. I went to the gun shop and I walked in like I was committing a crime, and they were looking at me like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, yeah, I'm just want to buy. Oh, you want to buy a gun? Come on, let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> but it, what do you think of this? Hey, feel that? Don't that feel good? We'll go out to the range here. Take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> but I think people. I, my lunch break, I bought a gun. I think I people, though, who come from a liberal city, like I grew up in Boston, you know, you go down to Texas and other cities where there are gun stores all over the place, and it is the norm. But when you grow up in a liberal city, you have to go seek out the uh, uh, the gun store. And like you said, it's like you're walking in, and it's almost like you're meeting a prostitute, like where you don't want anyone to see you, and if they find out you're in trouble. like I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but you know what I mean? Like, and then you get, no, I don't know what you mean, Sean. <laughs> Why don't you tell me about it? <laughs> and then you get to other parts of the country, especially in Texas and other places that are pro-2A. Like for us, when I started getting older and you went up to New Hampshire where there are gun stores pretty uh, uh, regularly, you're like, oh, oh, this is normal. Oh, it's us that's it's insane. Normal. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. You realize that it's the rest of the country that's insane because... I went on my lunch break and I bought it. And I bought it <laughs> so back great. and I had it hidden in my trunk and a couple of people knew I went and they're like, well, hey, let's see it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't pull this out right here. Like, Why? <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? Of course you can. <laughs> you, you know, that same conversation takes place in California, but it's a completely different yeah. uh, <laughs> different reference yeah, point. Let's go back to the prostitutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically. I Specifically in San Francisco. Now, now, is your gun broken? Has it ever run down the street, chased anybody, and killed a bunch of people? Never. Ah. Never. Oh, <laughs> so it's lazy. It's lazy. According to Californians out there, your gun is clearly broken and lazy. <laughs> yeah. I, actually, I gave my my gun a name. It's Lady Liberty. I <laughs> nice, and, and I salute her. So, <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm in I'm in I'm in Chicago, so I can't carry it anywhere. It has to stay in the house, oh. and, and unless I go get a concealed carry permit, you have to get a permit for everything here, and even still. You have to carry it in such a way that it's basically it, 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 they disarm you here in Chicago. It's just yep. 
It's ridiculous. Well, in Chicago, there's really no need for self-defense. I mean, the streets are perfectly yeah, safe. And uh... <laughs> hey, you know what? For Chicago to kill out the, to to carry out the death penalty, I think they should take their death row inmates and just make them go stand on a street corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eventually, it'll do the job, and the gangbangers will that, like it because well, they can't get charged that, with murder because it's state sponsored. That would be cruel and unusual punishment. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I joke about it and I wrote about it extensively. And um, the thing about it is, when I first came to Chicago, I was in the. Uh, I, I worked at. Of course, you've heard of the Chicago Defender newspaper. Yes. Mm-hmm. I. I worked for them, and it was my first week there, and we were having an editorial meeting in an office on the first floor, and outside, we were at 24th of Michigan, that may not mean anything to you, but that's kind of going toward the south side, Yep. and all of a sudden, we heard pow, 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 and everyone jumped on the floor except me because I was new to it. And they were like, get down. I'm like, get down. Get down for what? They're shooting. And you know what? Throughout the whole thing, I just sat there because I didn't even expect it. You're so, like, oh, I can tell they're shooting the other way. We're fine. Get back up. We're having a meeting. Let's go. <laughs> what a meeting. It, it was completely beyond my comprehension, a comprehension. And a few weeks later, we're sitting in the newsroom, and some guy comes running in all terrified. And we're like, what's you know, what's wrong? He's like, they they tried to shoot me. And they're like, tried to shoot me. They picked them up on one side of town. They brought them. And they were going to take them to some alley over to where we were at. They were going to take us from the alley and kill them. But he jumped out at the light and ran into the newsroom. Oh. And one of the guys I worked with said, why the hell are you running in here? We don't want to get shot. <laughs> and why are you bringing oh, your my. problems to work? Stop that. <laughs> that was, uh, I don't know. It's, so it's, you know what it's, it really is. It really is a beautiful city. It has a lot to offer. You hit it on the head when it talks about the interesting people, the great food, the great sites. The architecture is amazing. Yep. It's just a pity that these Democrats and these liberals have just completely screwed it up. Well, it's, and this, uh, I think this is a great preference for what your show is going to be and what you plan on talking about. Well, that's what it is, you know. I'm so so. Your listeners would know. I am a I'm a conservative from way back. You know, I was a conservative. Probably, I don't know. From the first time I became politically aware, although at the time I thought I was a Democrat and I thought I was a liberal, and that's only because, like most black people, that's all we knew. You know, it, you that's know, all you were told were you were allowed to be. That. Yeah, that's all we were allowed to be. It wasn't until I ended up in Tuskegee, Alabama, and I met two uh, uh, two black students at Tuskegee University, Kip Jones and uh, um, Andre Dixon, and they were they had started a black conservative group at Tuskegee, and uh, uh, which with a lot of people might say, "Oh, at Tuskegee University, wow, how is that out the norm?" Well, not really, because uh, Booker T. Washington, who founded the university, was a Republican to begin with, mm-hmm. and of course, as you as you know, b- black people up until the '60s were most likely Republicans. Then they were Democrats. Yes. Well, talking to these two, they would question me and they they challenged me, and they would always ask me questions. And the one thing I learned about them is they didn't make me. They didn't convince me. They left it up to me to come around. So they didn't like, you're wrong, you're not, you, you're wrong, I'm right, you're not wrong, I'm right. They would, I would say something, and they say, well, what sense does that make? And I would think about it, and they would say, well, why do you say that? And why, why do you think that? And it made me question everything I thought I knew. And that's when I became a, re- a Republican, and that's when I became a conservative. But I have to qualify that. I, am, I consider myself a default Republican. And I say that because I really have no great love for, quote unquote, the Republican Party per se. And, and mainly that's because I trust the Republicans far less than I trust the Democrats. Because a Democrat, you know what a Democrat believes and you know what a Democrat's going to do. 
You know it. They yeah. don't lie to you. But Republicans, oh my God, nothing <laughs> is more frustrating than the Republican Party. Yeah, look nothing at the... Is- Look at the Republican Party here in California. They call themselves Republicans, yet... Uh. <laughs> and, and you know what's crazy? is They're still going to get protested when they do their, when they do their convention, oh, whatever it's the heck it's going to be. Going to be amazing. What? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think they agree with everything the left is doing, which is bizarre. I don't know why they'd protest them. <laughs> if anybody should protest them, it should be the Republicans from the rest of the country. Yeah, we should go protest we should as go conservatives. Pro- yes. <laughs> well, you know what it is? I say I'm a default Republican uh, because I tell people, you know, during the re- election, a lot of people were criticizing Donald Trump. They mm-hmm. were saying a lot of a lot of the never Trumpers said, "Well, he's not a conservative." And I supported Trump when it was clear he was going to be our nominee. And right. I supported him. I'm like, he never said he was a conservative. They were the Republican. We're a conservative party. I said, no, we're not. <laughs> They're like, what do you mean? I said, look, the Republican Party just happens to be the home of the conservative movement. That does not make it, quote, unquote, a conservative party. It just happens to be that that's where the conservative movement in the United States happens to reside. Yep. There's all kinds of Republicans. There's moderate Republicans, there's liberal Republicans, and of course there's of course conservative Republicans. So it really is kind of like a coalition. Yes. I said so I'm a Republican by default. <laughs> if the Republican movement got up and ended up in a Republican I mean in the Democrat Party, God forbid, I'd be a Democrat. Well, what? and the, the Democrats are full of their own little uh, uh, um, divided groups within their own party. You have the progressives, the old blue dog Democrats, um, and, and it gets the anarchists are now under there, which just makes me laugh hysterically that the anarchists <laughs> actually kind of... It, it's almost like they don't know what their own name means, but that's fine. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. They use black block tactics and they run around like a bunch of a-holes. They don't even know... <laughs> And they want bigger government. Right. <laughs> and then when they get give bigger government, they cry. It's crazy. And hide behind That's the First funny. Amendment. Isn't that funny? That's the funny part. Anarchists that want bigger government. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but they're so well informed and know what they want. Uh, we only have a couple minutes left in this segment. <laughs> Perry, uh, uh, what kind of topics? I know you said politics. Anything specifically interested that you enjoy taking on? Oh, anything specific. Okay, I love to talk about the Constitution. I really do. Economics is really something, because I I think economics is very poorly taught in Mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. It's one of my, it's one of the things I I, I really love. I'm big on pop culture, but specifically pop cultures when it comes to things that have conservative themes to them that people don't necessarily even know are conservative. Mm -hmm. And, um, and other than that, I, I tend to be, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very pro, I guess the best way to put me is I'm kind of, I'm libertarian, but I'm not, a lot of my thinking is libertarian, but I don't say I'm a libertarian because that's the Star Trek part, you know, the Star <laughs> Trek part. I don't, well, it is, you know, because well, I talk to me, oh, you, you sound like libertarian, I'm like, well, not really, because I don't go to Comic-Cons and Star Trek conventions. Well, no, I'm not quite like that. I do believe that I believe that the answer to most of man's mankind illnesses and problems are liberty. And mm-hmm. that's simply that. The best way I describe myself is I tell people I'm not so much libertarian, I'm not so much conservative, as I am a person that knows a lie when he hears it. And that's from both sides. Absolutely. Like, cause, cause conservatives will sit there and they will tell you, they will point at liberals and say, see how blind they are to these things that are self-evident within the Constitution? And yet, conservatives have their own, so-called conservatives, have their own blind spots when it comes to the Constitution. And specifically, I will say, like, like the, drug, the drug war. And I've had you. You'd be surprised how many, how many arguments I've had with conservatives. I'm like, you're going to tell me that in the Constitution you don't see anything that says that, okay. And I agree with them. 
that nothing, the Constitution is completely mute on, on abortion. It, it is, no matter what the Supreme Court said. And yet, you're going to sit there and tell me that same Constitution gives the federal government the right to prosecute people for drug use? Where do you see that at? Well, and, and, and again, it's you, you go back to uh, the the strict constitution and what it's been perverted on a lot of different levels, and that's kind of like us. And we're up against a break, but you know, we say all the time we're conservatives with the little L next to us, um, where we have that little libertarian thing. And you know, Perry, it's one of those. If you come to Freedom Fest with us, uh, you'll see libertarians can actually party pretty well. They're not all the Star Trek nerds. Yeah. The problem is, is the Star Trek nerd libertarians are like every other group that we don't that you don't want to own. They're the ones that make it onto social media and whatnot, and that's the one where yeah. everyone thinks. I, I'll tell you right now, some of the greatest conversations about liberty we've ever had, one on one, have been at Freedom Fest with some of the libertarians. Um, right up to the to the Free State Project, to the absolute extreme libertarians that are admittedly borderline anarchists, where they think government literally yeah. is just for like the self protection for the protection from other countries, and then get the hell out of the way. Right. Um, right. Through more of the mainstream ones, so they're there, and and it's a very intelligent group of people. Uh, they just see things slightly different. Perry, we are against a break, sir. Thank you so much for your time this evening. It was a pleasure Perry, meeting you, Perry. Yeah, it's a pleasure meeting you, and, you know, I'm looking forward to whatever collaborations in the future, and I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, and you, and just make sure that Ken gives you the 10 bucks uh, he said he was going to for coming on tonight. <laughs> yeah, and, and Perry, yeah. by the way, within 30 seconds of, of you uh, being introduced to SHR, you got a nickname. Uh, and your nickname is Perry, quote-unquote, Mason Williams, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> so in the SHR family, you, you have a nickname, so Perry Mason, so you're good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> by the fact, it's strange that you bring that up, uh, Perry Mason. My mother told me that's why she named me Perry. Of course, her last name was Drake. She said she named me Perry. I'm like, well, why Perry? She said because her favorite TV show was Perry Mason. Wow. And again, wow. Perry, of course, there was Perry Mason, and his assistant was <laughs> Paul Drake. See wow. That? Perry, like, well, and now you that you know that Sackhead Clint is clairvoyant. Well, and also what? it's kind of ironic because uh, Perry, my partner, was named after Clint Eastwood. Yes, I was. Um, oh, uh, I, I, yep, I so really was. that's, and you, and you pulled Paul Drake out. So I don't know this, the interview could not get any better and we're going to end it there. Yeah. <laughs> I think we pretty much just nailed that. As a matter of fact, we're going to end the show. We want to thank you for joining us tonight on the Sackheads radio show. <laughs> Perry, so we will hear from you shortly right here on the SHR media network. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> we're up against a break. When we come back, we will play a little bit of catch-up here on the SHR Media Network. Um, we have Supreme Court. Oh, that's Surprise, Surprise Clint. Clint. Without glasses, it looks like Supreme Court. We'll surprise Clint on the other side real quick and get into some other topics right here on the Sackheads Radio Show live on the SHR Media Network. Supreme Court. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network. Hey, it's Sean from the Sackheads Radio Show, also one of the owners here at the SHR Media Network. Are you opinionated? Have you ever wanted to do your own show? Have you ever heard somebody like the Sackheads and go, yeah, I could probably do that better? Well, now's your chance. Send me a five-minute clip at sackheadsradio at gmail.com, and maybe you can be part of the SHR broadcasting team. Sackheadsradio at gmail.com. Times are dark. The people are misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation looking for direction needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, Pundit Press Radio, and YouTube through the SHR Media page for a different kind of commentary on the unpleasant blind guy. Because the truth is not always pleasant.
Sackhead Sean. Dude, I'm not saying Cap is stupid, bro. Sackhead Clint. Now, all good friends of ours usually show, show up drunk. drunk. Also starring Sako as the producer. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. They are the Sackhead's radio show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific on shrmedia.com. The bloviating Zeppelin. He's big-footed enough radio shows to last a lifetime, courtesy of Sean, Clint, Ken, and Jersey Joe. Now it's time for him to waddle on his own two feet via the glorious SHR Media. Gird thy loins for the bloviating Zeppelin's berserk bobcat saloon. Coming soon to ossicles near you, Excelsior. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network. Mary, defense attorney, we can't talk. Welcome back to the Sackheads Radio Show live in the SHR Media Network. You can't hear me at all? I didn't say that. Oh, okay. Because everyone heard you read Mary's comment aloud. <laughs> I could. I could. <laughs> uh, Ken, I'm happy to see you. Just so you know. And it's not a 45. It's a, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of magnum it is. <laughs> oh, man. So I have a surprise Clint segment. Yes. Which does I don't get to do this often, but you, I. You don't. I know, I know for a fact that you didn't really get to see this, um, and only because... Tom Brady uh, didn't cheat no, at all. No, it has, it has nothing to do with football. Really? Yes. Um, nothing wrong with a forty five, Dave. Nothing wrong at all. Forty five caliber? Yeah. No. Great round. with it. I, yeah. I, you know, it's... I had this discussion at work the other day with a buddy of mine. We were talking about calibers and different weapons, and I said, my only issue with... Uh, 45 is expense. It's an expensive round to shoot. It's a regularly. big, heavy, slow round. It's but slow. the energy, the energy transfer is pretty good. But yeah. look, if you want to punch through a car door or something like that, you know, use something a little bit. I'd use a 40 or maybe some of the new nine that's out. Yeah, some of the new nine that's out is pretty incredible. Ballistically, yeah, it performs very, very well. Change. I'll tell you right now. You go to, um, you start looking at prices of ammunition mm-hmm. and weapons. Mm-hmm. The price of nine millimeters have skyrocketed. They in have the last it's because year of the, because, because of the new ballistics. Yep, yep absolutely. Um, and forty calibers have dropped through the floor. So if you don't own a forty, now's the time now's to go the buy, time one. buy one. And I, yeah, I have nine. I have forties. I have three fifty seven sig. I got forty fives. Mm-hmm. I, have, I, I mean, and you. I mean, you, we've. Shit, how many times have we been through this? <laughs> but uh, nothing at all. I like to call it bragging about my kids. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I'll, t- you know, I'll tell you what, and you know this too. Uh, uh, and BZ and I were talking about this a couple weeks ago. Oh uh, my God, Joe, that is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you that can't read the chat room. But he's an Eagles fan, Joe I think. Goes, Russia act the Super Bowl to help Patriots win. Hashtag not my Super Bowl champs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, you know, uh, so BZ and I were talking about it in the same conversation. We were talking about concealed carry mm-hmm. um, and, you know, the different guns. That, and there's a great variety of weapons out there now for concealed carry. They've really expanded on that market quite a bit. Um, and I, I, I'm a Glock guy. You know I'm a Glock guy. I've always liked my Glock. Yep. I, I've always been I'm successful with guy. it. Yeah. Great weapon. Just yep. Great it's system. Completely preferential. Absolutely. It's what I shoot better with. Yep. That's what it comes down to. And then I got my M&P shield. And what a great little gun that is. Mm-hmm. Nine millimeter. I got the little fingertip extension because I have my fat hands. Uh, but 10 feet, solid as a rock. If you get in a gunfight with a concealed weapon past 10 feet, you're in trouble. Um, you know, I call it the oh shit gun. But Why is Big Mouth disappointed? 
with Sean. Okay. Is this because you? It's be, is this because it's a Smith? Uh, uh, you, ah, wait, is this because wait. it's a Smith and Wesson? He, he'll explain it. He BMP is a big gun guy as well. Okay, uh, in our chat room, the Big Mouth Patriot. Um, so it, yeah, so Big Mouth Patriot uh, for two two three. I'm I'm a POF guy, yeah. and uh, for uh, handguns, I'm a uh, I'm a uh, I'm a Springfield XD guy. Yeah, well, and again, I, I know, Big Mouth Patriot hates Glocks. Always has. Um, I remember his old wheel gun. Yeah. That, and he was actually one of the first people I think I knew uh, that owned an XD or, or, uh, back in the day. And if he corrects me about that, I could be wrong. But um, he had a wheel gun forever. Um, and, I, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get lit up. Yeah, I know you love your XD subcon. I'm going to get lit up for gun choices. After I said it's a great weapon, I have no problem. Oh, you did. You whatsoever. did. Fair. But, but, you know, he's going to be a hater. He's gonna, that's okay. I'll get to I, I'll I'll send a message to his wife and straighten him out. So, anyhow, <laughs> surprise, Clint. Clint, what are you doing on March 8th? Uh, I'm doing something with SHR, apparently. No? No, I don't know. I've got to well, look at my calendar. I just hope that you understand that the world is going to shut down. Oh, perfect. The organizers of the Women's March on Washington have set a date for a day without women on March 8th, 2017, which is also International Women's Day. The long and short of it is, is they're going to ask every woman in the world to stay home from their job or whatever it is that they do. Perfect. <laughs> I got a couple places for them to stand while they're in the home. It's freaking perfect. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and I read this and I went, really? That's how you like. I, uh, and we go into this discussion all all the time when you get into these with these feminist lunatics. And I say that because I, I, I grew up with two very strong sisters and a strong mother. They weren't feminists they didn't nobody did anything for them they did it for themselves um they didn't need anybody to pave the way for them they paved their own road each in their own individual careers um and my mother just being a crazy uh, old irish chick who would kick everyone's ass um so uh, when we talk about feminism and we talk about idiotic days like the national strike day and stuff like that it is people demanding that one group be pushed down so another group can be lifted up in this case it's men versus women um which is exactly what the feminist party does instead of actually empowering and getting behind like real strong women who do great stuff they start destroying males and lifting up these women who've done nothing as their uh uh, uh that's the word I'm looking for. Their image of what a woman should be. I got an image of what a woman should be. <laughs> Why are my dreams any different? <laughs> let's put together an SHR Media Women's Day. But, but uh, let's be completely honest. You, you have some feminists that have done X, Y, and Z in business and have been very successful, whatever. But there are so many women out there who are not feminist and don't need a platform to talk about how wonderful they are and why men All women suck. need platforms, <laughs> but I'm talking about That's the shoes. shoes. Yep. <laughs> Look, these broads got nothing better to do. <laughs> Go get them, toots. <laughs> oh, I was telling my friend about that, and he was like, who's going to make all the sandwiches? Um, <laughs> they're staying home. What do you mean who's making the sandwiches? <laughs> They're staying home, guys. How could this go wrong? <laughs> but uh, listen, well, I'm, Sean, I'm failing to see what's wrong with this picture. <laughs> Convince me, brother. Like I'm, I'm all on board. I mean, we're talking. They are home in platforms making sandwiches. What's the problem? Oh man! Send your hate mail to Clint. That's <laughs> <It's radio. laughs> <laughs> Like Ken in the chat room says, make him barefoot too. Oh, wait till I see Mrs. Biggs in August. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on. Screenshot. <laughs> wait, I don't know if Ken could hear my phone click, but I definitely. <laughs> yeah, 
wow, Ken, you know, Clint and I are sitting here joking and yeah. using satire to prove a point, and you had to get real about yeah, it. Yeah, and there you go, bringing Miss wow. Picture. Probably the sweetest gal we've ever met. By the way. Yes. Angelic. Absolutely. Angelic. Yes. Probably going to be the next Catholic saint, even though she's not Catholic. Well, but she w- could be. But right? she could be. Two miracles. One, she married Ken. Absolutely. You have to perform two miracles to become a saint. Yeah. She married Ken, number one. Yep. And number two, she slept with him at some point. And Those two things. And hasn't, uh-huh. and hasn't killed him yet. And That's hasn't number, killed three. number three. Right. She's, yeah, sainthood. She might be the only one who will perform three. I'll have to do some <laughs> checking on that. Wow, Ken. Oh man. oh, man. You know, why did you have to make this real? We were just trying to have some fun and, and report a little news. Oh, <laughs> Jane, everybody's getting on. <laughs> Finally, I did it. <laughs> it's not just me. <laughs> Jane Butcher, who actually tolerates Dan Butcher somehow. Um, and I well, feel- She's the boss, uh, clearly. I have spent time with them, and yes, I will say wholeheartedly she is the boss. Um, she's like five foot two full of fury. Um, literally like one of the only people that i could picture her climbing somebody tall and then like bugs bunny like just beating them on the head sitting on their shoulders (laughs) um she's gonna call mrs biggs oh yes oh yes this is gonna be perfect oh look at what we did let's move right along clint this is your topic (laughs) while ken just tries to save himself in the chat room (laughs) look at (laughs) <laughs> uh, so what was the surprise Clint is it what these broads are doing or what? <laughs> yes <laughs> it was because <laughs> I knew you hadn't heard that one yet no I haven't I think it's beautiful <laughs> Oh, part of me just wants to. <laughs> Jane just corrected me. It'd be five foot three. Jane, hey you, Jane, you're, you're not sh- you're not That's Sean's fun. boss. So simmer down over there, okay? <laughs> you got a march to look forward to or something. I think you're beautiful. You're beautiful. <laughs> Let's not exaggerate the X range. All right, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> and you can squeeze an inch in there. Somewhere That's like with, saying Danny's Dan in the room. But That's like on. saying old Danny's only six foot one when he's like six foot four. Come on. <laughs> Oh, man. I, part of me just wants to sit here and narrate Ken trying to climb out of this. Oh, this because be the comedy behind this. <laughs> Melanie. I didn't see Melanie. was. Oh, she was texting. I didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This is big. <laughs> oh, I didn't see Melanie texting. I was laughing oh, too hard. That's great. Oh, no. <laughs> so. I'm sorry, I've just been compared to Mel from Alice, so I have to tell you to stow it. <laughs> what a great show that was. Right? Well, that was a great show. Oh, man, no more memory lane. Oh, all right, let's what the go. hell are we talking about? <laughs> In like Flint. Oh, wait, whoops, no. That's your segment, pal. <laughs> this is my se- I don't even know where the hell we are. You get to follow that. So, uh, General Flynn is out. Uh, next topic. Let's get back to talking about broads and sandwiches and stuff. That was easy. <laughs> More importantly, let's talk about Ken finally imploding somebody else. If, I thought I, here's honestly here's what I thought you were going to try and surprise me with because it has to do with broads and uh, the racism that you interject so frequently <laughs> is the uh, <laughs> Ken Ken I can hear Ken from DC going that's it that's it go down the racism road quick <laughs> uh, yeah yeah uh, because um, it's, uh, Doug Adler from ESPN oh. got fired for using a tennis term appropriately yes. But because of the, that's honestly where I thought you were going. Yeah, that's a re- it. Just shows you how off the deep end ESPN has gotten. Um, anytime you're using a, a term that is widely accepted as a term in your field, yeah. So, and if you're not unfamiliar with the story, let me let me kind of let me tee it up because I, I just we me. don't have much time, so we'll get into Flynn uh, next, next segment. segment. Yeah, this nauseated um, me. So. So Doug Adler, he's been he's been covering major tennis matches with ESPN since like 2008, um, and he was covering the uh, Serena Williams a uh, Serena Williams match, and on, on January 18th he used the term uh, the the gorilla effect, not gorilla. Gorilla effect and gorilla tennis is an actual term used. It was part of a, a TV commercial between. Uh, 
uh, Connors and Agassi. Ang- Agassi, was it I think? Agassi? In, in the, the New York, New York yeah, went, downtown yeah. streets. Yep. Um, so Nike ran a whole gorilla tennis ad, and it's an actual term. I think there's actual like. Uh, anyways, it's an actual term, and I don't play tennis, but I have heard that term before, mm-hmm. and he used it. Well, the the ignoramuses, which comprise the left, said made such a stink about it because she's black, and instead of using utilizing the term gorilla, they said it was gorilla, right? As in the animal. First of all, how freaking racist are you to even think that? Mm-hmm. And and the ignorance that abounds, and that ignorance was taken to such a level that ESPN executives fired him. Yeah, uh, they fired him. They ruined his career. He's not going to be able to get a job anywhere. Uh, it, well, he's suing right now. A- absolutely, he's and good for him. Yeah, he's absolutely his name. But how batshit crazy is ESPN? ESPN has been getting more political anyway. Oh, uh, and as so much I don't as even they possibly could. I don't even watch ESPN. Yep. Um, but but. They terminated him for this. Well, and, and you know, he was speaking, of course, about Venus Williams, uh, who's uh, yes. uh, you know one of the top tennis players in the world. Yeah, um, and I believe in she had a part in um, Pixels. Did she? Where the midget guy wanted to bring Serena Williams and uh, <laughs> <That's> right? <laughs> Remember? Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> um, Martha Stewart Martha and Serena Stewart. Williams for a twosome or for a threesome. <laughs> That's so bizarre. But you're right. Um, and, and, and like you said, the term gorilla tennis is actually a tennis term. I haven't seen if she has responded yet, um, but knowing her knowledge of tennis and the history of tennis, I, I'm pretty sure that she could have cared less that that comment was used. And, um, and ha- why hasn't she defended him? I don't know. I don't know. Like, hey, guys, this is a term that's used. It was describing the match I was engaged in. Right. And, and maybe... I. I I don't know that she hasn't done that, but right. I think I haven't that would have been yet. somewhere in some of the stories. But even if she did, the news being what it is right now... Ken just said she's a pretty endowed broad. Screenshot that quick. <laughs> quick. <laughs> Thank you. You're so screwed, Ken. The, new, the news cycle being what it is right now, uh, they may never cover her even rebutting that because it goes against their narrative. Yeah. But look, he he did exactly what his job is. I mean, he he called the 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 match very well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, yeah. So I'm just, and this isn't the first time. Listen, look at what happened with Kurt Schilling because of his political beliefs uh, uh, over the summer. Yeah. Um. And, and ba- <laughs> Melody said, "Ken and the endowments." Yeah, Melody. When we were trying to talk to Ken about the endowments of arts and stuff like that, he kept going back to the wrong thing, and we we had to correct him a lot. But that's just Ken. Um, yeah. And, and by the way, and Ken stares a lot, right, at women's at women, right, Especially, when Mrs. Biggs isn't around. Yeah, I, have you noticed that? Yeah, remember we had to stop him that one time. I, I remember. Yeah, I, and, and we said, Ken, that's not a woman. <laughs> And well, he said, I don't care. <laughs> oh, no, I do remember that, actually. That was very, very specific. <laughs> um, I, we documented it. Remember we had a counseling session with him afterwards? Um, yeah. We were like, hey, listen. And Ken. he said, wait a second. I thought you guys had a libertarian slant to you, and you didn't care what I yeah, did in well, my own personal life. But normally when you do that stuff. Um, we said, yeah, but. You have to wear pants. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's the, that was the kind of. Uh, caveat with that um and certainly not a pink banana hammock no that was completely inappropriate for the very conference. In, very very inappropriate particularly since the pink banana hammock and when he smiled and stuck his tongue out at the same time it, you couldn't tell which end was up <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, listen and bmp nailed it and I, I i did as well stopped watching espn a long time ago yep because they've allowed politics to enter into sports, and more so they've pushed it into sports. Um, and, and it's now becoming bigger than the sport itself. And that's a problem when you are supposed to just be reporting on sports. Mm-hmm. They've, they've copied the 24-hour news cycle. Remember when ESPN used to just be da na 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 and Sports Center, and occasionally they play a game? Yeah. Now they've copied the 24-hour news cycle, and they get into all these 
uh, commentary shows, right, about politics and not even about sports. Right. Um, and, and Freaking entertain me. Right. That's your job. Um, and it's only a matter of time. I'll tell you what, the fact, and it goes to show you, too, how much they placate. Um, the fact that Stephen A. Smith hasn't been fired, who said some pretty controversial, more conservative things overall, mm-hmm. um, has never been fired from ESPN, shows you that they're afraid to to hold everybody to that same standard. Kurt yes. Schilling was quick. Yep. Um, Adler was quick. Uh, but Stephen A. Smith, who has said a lot of things like these guys, um, intentionally versus unintentionally. You know, I go back to Schill. Schill was fired from ESPN for something he didn't even say on ESPN. Right. It was just his Facebook stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and not that I think... Any of them should have been fired, nor do I think Stephen A. Smith should be fired. I don't but think companies should be monitoring their employees' Facebook. Right. Honestly. And, and Unless it's set up like, like, if, like if, if we had an employee that was Facebooking or tweeting as SHR Media, whatever. Right, but your own story. personal but stuff your own personal is your own stuff. personal stuff. Yeah. Um, and as long as you're allowed to keep that, um, then, you know, it, it's, it's okay, but... Stephen A. Uh, Smith, and I'm glad he says what he says, because I think it needs to be said. Um, he's very much the voice of reason on a lot of subjects. And I don't like Stephen A. Smith on other subjects. Um, I, I, I respect the fact that he will come out and call out people for their BS that aren't sports-related. Um, and he'll do it uh, without any shame. Um, I, I think his views on sports are horrible and who he likes and doesn't like, but that's neither here nor there. I can disagree with him that all day. Um, but <laughs> Ken in the chat room just said, I am so dead. Sean, please say something racist, please. <laughs> okay, fine. Stephen A. Smith won't get fired because he's black. No, but that's true. Oh, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ken, I get nothing tonight. Maybe if you weren't such a, 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 a sexist bastard. Yeah, yeah, Ken, maybe if you weren't referring to Mrs. Biggs as a broad and staring right. at other women's Barefoot, body in kitchen, parts and pregnant. Yeah. I'm almost positive he said pregnant. I almost he said, he, yeah, I almost said, he, I almost believe he said two places kitchen in the bedroom, kitchen right. in the bedroom. <laughs> um,. And I don't appre- I don't appreciate that. And now he just said that's true. Yeah, I, that's screenshot right. that. So okay. loop the audio and screenshot that's true. <laughs> I'm going to make a gif out of this. Yes, <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. Ken. Yeah. Thank so you. Clint said two places, kitchen and bedroom. And Ken immediately said that's true. And here's the screenshot. And then he laughed about it, thinking it's a joke. Yeah, L O L O L. When people's yeah. feelings are getting hurt, that's the worst part about this, Ken. Yeah, it's amazing. People's feelings are getting hurt, and you're just going to do that nonchalantly like it's nothing. You know, when are you going to think about others, Ken? That's what I want to know. When are you going to think about others? You know, women have feelings, Ken. They're people, too. They bleed just like you and me. And well, okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what I mean. I mean, like, when they're injured. Uh, I love how red you're turning right now. Break? Should we take a break? I think we should take a break. Take a break on that one. Uh, uh, yeah. How about a break? Everyone we're going to take a break on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, thank you, Melanie. Wow is right, because I yeah. I was just... Yeah, disturbed. I'm shocked also about what Ken's uh, stuff right? is going on the here today. He it's ridiculous. Thing, Absolutely. I, I just... <sighs> Dave, I don't ever pay extra for that in Vegas. <laughs> oh, I get paid extra for that in Vegas. By the way, if you were at Freedom Fest last year, and you should go this and year, and you as should well. go this year, then you remember the story of a prostitute propositioning me yes. and me actually turning the tables and telling her that <laughs> I charge were... X number of dollars for my time. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> And she was like 500 and you were like 1,500. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> and I was like, sweetheart, I don't think you can afford me. She yeah. was like, wait, what? what? <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> She's like, hold on, I'll go play Baccarat. I'll be right back. Yeah. Oh, man. When we come uh. back, we're going to get into... 
Uh, uh, we're going to be out like Flynn in it, like uh, yeah. Flynn. We got some stuff to we talk about, We got some folks. stuff to do Stick here. Stick around. All that and more on the Sackheads Radio Show live on the SHR Media Network. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network. Breaking news. According to the latest report coming out of SHR Media, a merchandise store to support both the Reaver of Common Sense and SHR Media has just been unleashed to the general public. Be forewarned that this site can be contagious and numerous items can be purchased to support the best news programming. Go to Reaver.one website and click on the store link to check out the merchandise. Hello. I'm Matt, a student at Hillsdale College. Here is Hillsdale President Larry Arne on the continuing relevance of the Constitution. Many argue today that the Constitution is outdated because it addresses problems peculiar to the 18th century. Some parts of the Constitution do read rather quaintly. Consider the injunction against titles of nobility in Article 1, Section 9 of the Constitution. But is that so outdated? The purpose of the injunction is to prevent the government granting special privileges to some for partisan reasons. This strikes at the heart of the rule of law. The crony capitalism, so common today, is a place where the government bestows favors and tax dollars on some businesses to give them a leg up over others. This is exactly the kind of thing the Constitution was meant to prohibit. The Constitution is not so outdated after all. This Constitution Minute was brought to you by Hillsdale College. To join the national conversation on the Constitution, go to constitutionminute.com. Times are dark. The people misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation in confusion needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, High Plains Talk Radio, Live Rebooting Liberty, and YouTube for a unique brand of commentary on the Unpleasant Blind Guy. Because truth is not always pleasant. In a world. A team of ordinary men emerge from the ashes to give voice to the voiceless and hope to the hopeless. Sackhead Sean. Dude, I'm not saying Cap was stupid, bro. Sackhead Clint. All good friends of ours usually show show up drunk. drunk. Also starring Socko as the producer. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. They are the Sackheads Radio Show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific on shrmedia.com. Beware, the Jersey Takeover is here. Every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Center Time. You can catch the Rework Common Sense Show, hosted by Jersey Joe, right here on shrmedia.com and hyphensdailynews.com. Only Jersey can deliver hell like no one else, so consider this your fair warning. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network. I have a prepared statement I'd like to read on behalf of SHR Media. Uh, This was cleared by our attorneys. Just very quickly. Um, In regards to Mr. Kenneth, I believe it's pronounced McClinton. Yes. We apologize to all on behalf of SHR Media. Uh, for the comments made by Kenneth McClinton, an associate uh, uh, and a show host on SHR Media, those are his personal opinions, not the opinions of the SHR Media Network. Going forth, um, if you'd like to direct any and all complaints, please do so on the Exceptional Conservative Show. Thank you. And Mrs. Biggs, don't kill us. Uh, yeah, please, sweetheart. We it, love it, you. It, it, We think you're amazing. We, uh, um, we think, yes. I mean, We know you're amazing. I said angelic earlier. You heard me, right? Yes. I did oh, say yes. angelic, right? I, I said saintly. No, you did say you saintly. Did, you, okay. As a matter of fact, we said three miracles. And we named them all. Right. So, I mean, that's, and that's just the ones we know. 
Right, right. So, right. I mean, yeah, it's going to be a miracle if she doesn't kill him. So right. that would be four. four, four, four. Yeah, yeah. That would be that would be four. So yeah, I just had to get that out of the way. Anywho, moving right along, Clint, you're up, my friend. So uh, we don't have a um, national security uh, person anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We still he love, quit. We still love you, Mrs. Biggs. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill me. Uh, yeah. Ken, uh, sir, uh, can we suspend his account? No. For somehow, no. can we? No. No, just let it let it roll. Yeah. Right? Let oh, it yeah. dig let deeper and deeper. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He'll be in China by tomorrow morning. <laughs> They'll never find him. <laughs> really? They won't find him in China? <laughs> <laughs> He'll blend right in, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's the glasses. <laughs> oh, and security advisor Michael Flynn resigned. <laughs> By the way, why does Trump keep bashing China so much? They built a freaking wall. Uh, I, <laughs> Doesn't he want to emulate Can that? Can we get to Flynn, please? <laughs> I'm sorry. Flynn. Flynn. Uh, wow. Flynn, they built a wall. It was... Worked. People still visit it. Um, so he had inappropriate contact with the Russians uh, prior to his cabinet position. And look, the left is, the left is saying that um, he potentially violated uh, the law uh, in that private citizens are not supposed to engage in diplomacy uh, with uh, with foreign governments. By the way, didn't Dennis Rodman go somewhere? What? Didn't Dennis Rodman go to North Korea? Yes. He was. He, he so why was the left okay with that, but they're not okay with Flynn? <laughs> well, he wasn't the home <laughs> homeland security advisor. <laughs> A private citizen, though. That's the Logan Act, right? Which is supposed to prevent private citizens yes. from conducting yes. diplomacy. Yes. And Flynn was on his way to becoming a cabinet member. Rodman's just fucking crazy. <laughs> this is very, very true. Uh, l- <sighs> Listen. I don't know. Uh, I understand why... There is an issue, and I no, no, no. I'm not. Please don't misunderstand right. what I'm saying. I'm simply pointing out the absurd. Right, but it's a valid point. It I remember when point. Rodman went to North Korea. Hey, listen, and nobody Bill, lost their minds over that. Remember when Bill Clinton that. went to North Korea to rescue two girls? Yeah, no, he was hailed as a hero. Yeah, a private citizen. Yeah, so former let's not, president. Let's not let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here, folks. But was it inappropriate? Absolutely. Yeah. I think it was inappropriate. Do I think he should have stepped down or that Trump should have asked for that? Yeah. I think that was a good call. Right. Um, Am I concerned about the intelligence, a leak in the intelligence agency that brought this information to light? More so, yes. I am. Um, Look, I'm I'm not as concerned with the uh, um, Washington Washington Post uh, reporter that that put it out there. Uh, And here's why. I understand that there's a federal law out there that applies that says, hey, if you publish classified information, which that, that intelligence is, those conversations, the way they were gathered by the intelligence community, publishing that story um, about those conversations technically could be a violation. Uh, but the interesting thing is the First Amendment allows the press to uh, th- those freedoms. First Amendment, Congress shall make no law. Correct. Correct. And so that U.S. code that pertains to publishing intelligence information, that's a law passed by Congress. Therefore, it should not apply to the press. I think that's a valid argument. I agree. Um, Because the press is that check, that public check on the government when they're trying to be secretive. Supposed to be. Supposed to be. That being said. Though though where were those uh, uh, news hounds for the last eight years? Yeah, look, that being said, I don't don't think it's necessarily a good idea to publish uh, intelligence in newspapers. However, I don't think he should necessarily be prosecuted. But those leaks that are are cited as being former and current high-level people, officials in government. That needs to be addressed. Perhaps they should. Perhaps they should be, be charged. Well, 
Um, and I even said this under the Obama administration when some leaks were returned. Like the from, Clinton emails? Yeah. And what was being leaked. And again, we have the long discussion of... I understand why they're being leaked. Yeah, and yeah, Melanie, there are transcripts. This was so. This was this was this came from um, intelligence that um, it was conducted. It was um, um, it's signal and signet. It's yep. signal intelligence. Yep. So cell phone calls, telephone calls, emails, text messages, all of that data um, can be collected, and that collected data is called signal intelligence. And so these transcripts from the calls, these were in fact signal intelligence of calls from Flynn um, and and the and the Russian uh, diplomats. So and and if true, which it appears there is because there is documentation of it that exists, um, he lied to Vice President Pence about this and so forth. Uh, Joe, the transcripts are uh, the property of the NSA and the Intel community. Um, I don't know how much of them have been leaked to the Washington Post reporter, um, but that's where the, that's where the transcripts are. Well, and how much of them can actually be released just based on the conversation? Well, they can't be. Yeah, they can't be. So, uh, makes them accessories. Yeah, if the material is gathered illegally. But again, Dave, it's uh, First Amendment is is rough because it says Congress shall make no law abridging blah blah blah, which says right there that those laws. Don't necessarily well, pertain. Or it's a it's a valid argument that it couldn't pertain to the to the press. And, and uh, you know, uh, Jane Butcher pointed out that the conversation seemed quite innocuous. I agree, um, but that doesn't change what the bigger issue was: is that he lied to Vice President Pence. Um, had he been forthcoming about that information, I think we would have a very very uh, different conversation. Um, about this. If, hey, prior to the confirmation or uh, the hiring, he was like, yeah, I had a conversation with the Russian diplomats about X, Y, and Z. But I think the issue is he he said he did not. Right. So, that's, so it becomes a trust issue for the Trump administration. Right. And not necessarily a legal issue. But a trust issue. But a trust issue for sure. And that's fine to ask for his resignation if you no longer feel that you can trust him as national security advisor. Absolutely. And the fact that he did that says a lot, in my humble opinion, um, about the administration. I know that the left is running around doing everything they can right now, um, trying to go after this administration. Yep. But And look, the guy had a, had a fantastic career. Um, look, he really did serve this country. However, look, if you're coming into an administration, and look at the big complaint on the right from the Obama administration. Mm-hmm. They were deceptive. They lied. You couldn't trust them. They lied, covered up, blah, blah, blah. So if you have your a cabinet appointee who, yeah, was a great pick, but one of the very first things you do is lie about something, Even, right? that's a problem. Right. And and look, he may have had a great career. He may have been, but he, the fact that he lied, he Is did this issue. to himself. Well, um, and, and again, because the conversations are apparently innocuous, as it was pointed out in the chat, there was no reason to lie other than the fact that he knew it would be an issue. Yep, in my opinion, and he decided that he didn't want that to be an issue. Um, but unlike the Obama administration and, and Democrats in general. Uh, 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 Trump did something about it. Hey, you know what? I, I don't trust him, or because of that one lie, I don't feel I can trust him. Um, or even if it's just saving face, he still did it. Um, and and uh, I, I think that that says a lot um, about them trying to uh, maintain integrity. Absolutely. And you look at the left and the mainstream media over the past couple days. I saw a report today from the Associated Press that says Trump's White House is in complete chaos. And then I saw, well, first of all, it's 100 days in. 100 days into a new, new administration. I would agree with that. They probably are in chaos in the sense that everyone's trying to find their role. They're trying to get caught up on all these affairs internationally, domestically. All this stuff's going on. So, yeah, I, I didn't. I, I, of course, they were in other chaos. And then they're talking about how uh, White House employees don't like the Trump administration. They're doing everything they can right now to go after the administration with emotion. Mm-hmm. And we talk about the left all the time. They go after the emotional portion of it. They don't want to talk about the fact that, hey, hey listen, we talked about the travel ban last week. I think you guys talked about it. Um, 
and they're working on that. But the fact that he put the travel ban into place, like he said he was going to, the wall, he's moving forward on the wall. This week you have ICE, immigrant, uh, uh, ICE uh, officials making mass arrests on yeah. uh, immigrants who have been scheduled for deportation. Yep. So <clears throat> they, they don't want to cover that. Well, when they do, they try to make the emotional side of it as well. They tell you about that one, quote-unquote, great person who was already protected by the Obama administration, and now he's being arrested and sent back to the country he's from. Uh, They don't have anything. And we talk about the hype of the media and the hype of the left. This is the most they have. And they're not going to cover the fact that he handled it differently than uh, uh, his predecessor. They're not going to talk about the fact that uh, the left... um, constantly does whatever they do and lie about it, get caught. I mean, look at talking about Flynn, you had Pelosi and somebody else uh, um, quote a fake Twitter saying that Flynn was the scapegoat, and they used that quote in their speech about it, and then just released a statement of like, oh, yeah, we accidentally, uh, uh, we, we just, we're, we're. No, 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 you're supposed to verify it. You're a goddamn congresswoman. Yeah. I think it was Elijah Cummings was with her, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, and then you didn't, and now you're going to on the side. So I don't. Th- I think this is a big nothing burger, so to speak. Um, I think they're trying to take a bite, and there's no calories inside. There is nothing on this other than the fact of, hey, this came up, this wasn't right, and the administration requested his resignation, and he gave it. Which is, which is the right thing to do mm-hmm. in this case, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Um, because regardless of what the substance of those conversations were, the fact that he um, misrepresented, the fact that he had him, he lied about it, mm-hmm. is enough. Mm-hmm. And Trump's trying to set, like you said, I think he's trying to set a tone with this administration. He's accomplished a great deal. He's treating it like a job, which is... What he should be doing. Yeah, absolutely what he, what he should be doing. I mean, um, listen, uh, Eric Holder, how long did he stay in office after he refused to prosecute himself for contempt charges in Congress? I think that's worse than this is. Of course it is. Uh, ten times worse. Of course it is. But where was the press going crazy over that? And look, if Flynn had said, yeah, you know what? I had some conversations. We talked about soccer. We talked about the, we talked about whatever. Um, okay. Right? It's the lie. The lie is the big issue. The lie is the big issue. Um, but then you watch the left reaction and how they react to this versus the last, last administration. Uh, 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 uh. It's absolutely crazy to me. Lois Lerner or any of the other. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) name it, right? (laughs) Yeah, we could go down the list as we speak. Um, And and yet, nobody seems to be jumped. Nobody jumped on that, but now all of a sudden it's an issue. Um, It's because they hate Trump and they have no idea what to do with him or how to respond. And then pardoned himself. You're right, Melanie. He did pardon himself. Yeah. But it just shows you that the narrative hasn't changed, and mainstream media hasn't learned its lesson yet. Um, and they're still out there just reporting BS and hoping something's yeah. going to stick. Yeah, they are. Uh, listen, I don't think the New York Times should be prosecuted. Um, no, I don't either. Uh, 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 I, the Post, right? The Post. I'm sorry, The Post. Yeah. Um, do I absolutely think that people should not tune into the post, read it online and uh, uh, not buy the newspaper because they release potentially hazardous material? Yeah. I think that the public should stand up and speak. Yeah. But I've said that about a lot of other news agencies and it still hasn't happened yet. Um, turn these idiots off. Turn off MSNBC and all those other morons. Um, and, and, you know, you make an interesting point about, about the reporting of it because over, what, over 680 undocumented right criminal aliens were arrested and deported over 75 percent of those had serious criminal convictions yep violent violent criminal convictions we're talking homicide and rape Mm -hmm. um one man from chicago was an iraqi citizen who had a history of sexual abuse right um, with a victim who couldn't consent wait wait an Uh, iraqi citizen impossible it was all mexicans that were arrested i i I read the news stories right Right. Well, CNN reported in California State Senator Kevin DeLeon that uh, the Speaker Pro Tem in the in the California State Senate said, "quote What took place yesterday with raids and personal homes is part of the cog in the Trump deportation machine." Mm-hmm. And then on MSNBC, 
uh, Raul Reyes, an attorney, said how inhumane this is to be breaking down people's doors and separating parents from their children. How, how, really, moms and kids and shopkeepers and these guys are so dishonest in the way they portray it. And, and CNN and MSNBC, they allow these these politicians to go in there and, and not only spin this, but outright lie, and nobody takes them to task. Right. Yet, yet, what happens when Flynn lied? Oh, Trump kicked him out. Right. He asked for his resignation. Right. Or he just saw the writing on the wall and resigned himself. Either way. Absolutely. I, 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 I agree. It's... <clears throat> and how about... Uh, any sort of credit to the fact that he did so very quickly upon finding out. There wasn't even a whole, well, I'm going to have a meeting about a meeting and then another meeting and waiting for the other meeting to come back and say blah, blah, blah. No. Uh, hey, this happened. We have proof. Yes, here it is. Done. Game over. We don't need it. Uh, let's move on. We got work to do. So, uh, yeah. And- but the bigger issue, like we talked about before, is the intel leak. Right. So the, the so the issue was I, I see Joe in the in the chat room is quoting the Washington Post. We're not saying whether Flynn did or didn't have an inappropriate conversation. The fact is he had a conversation. The conversations took place, and then he lied about it. That that's the that's the the main story or the the main problem is that he lied about even having the conversation. It wasn't like the, the content of the messages, but the intelligence community that knew about those conversations. And that Flynn had lied about him, then leaked that out. That's right. the problem it, because the source of those conversations is Intel. And we talked about this with the Clinton leaks, the Clinton email stuff. We talked about this uh, um, with all the information that went to uh, uh, WikiLeaks. 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 Wiki we said it's all coming from the inside. Um. It is all coming from the inside. There's a problem in the intelligence community, and it looks like there's a problem from somebody with uh, higher up in the White House. And this time, it may have been not a huge deal, per se, uh, the information that came out. I mean, it was it's a big deal, but it wasn't information about operational planning for the military or, or you know uh, uh, CIA activities or whatever. But what about next time? And the time after that, or anything to that effect, which becomes the bigger issue for me. There has to be some house cleaning done. Um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe it's time for him to re- start lying about some information to some advisors and see which one makes the news and which one doesn't. I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's the part that's driving me crazy. Is the, you, you have this administration and this information is being released to the press. It's not even being released. Hey, listen, if this was snuck onto Pence's desk, it was like, hey, Mr. Vice President, we found this today. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? But when you go run into the press, it, 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 that's a problem. Um, and I said that under the uh, the Clinton emails too. The biggest difference was is the Clinton emails were not government emails, right? Those That's are the biggest one. This was specifically a government transcript of a cell phone conversation. I would love to see if they had a warrant to actually obtain that cell phone conversation. You know the answer to that. That's a big deal. You know the answer to because that. Because who was in the administration? Whose administration was in charge when that phone call was made? Yeah, Obama's. The Obama administration, You know right? damn well they didn't have a warrant for that. Right. And they're going in not only after his cell phone, but the cell phone of a state diplomat from Russia. And now this information's being released. Yeah. So is, uh, is it safe to assume that Obama's CIA was tapping Flynn prior to? And when you start talking about election tapping, why would they be listening to this man's phone calls except for the fact that they knew he may play a role in this administration? So you want to talk about, go, uh, let's circle this back to the election tampering that they were all talking about. Well, Where's uh, the evidence now of the election tampering on the Democrats? Yeah, and you could, uh, you could also go back and say, or were they listening to this Russian and Flynn just happened to call? Maybe. 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 It's a good conversation to have. 
But if they did it via Flynn's phone, which they will have the evidence on which way they went into that. Yeah, look, either way. But what I, what I, what I really want to know is now this is another position that Trump has to fill. So one less person in his cabinet, which I think he was up to like three, right? Five, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, is he going to have a full cabinet in place by his 100 days in office? I think so. It'll be close, but I think so. Um, and, you know, there's some other good names being tossed around for National Security Advisor. Excuse me. Sack, uh, Sackhead, uh, Sean. Yep. Um, I think. I think. I thought I heard that. I might have been I'm mistaken. ready to go. Yeah. I am absolutely ready to go. I, no, I, th- I want you as press secretary. Yeah. I do. I want you as press secretary. <laughs> I don't know. Spice has been doing a pretty good job. I love his SNL skit. Dude, that was pretty funny, actually. <laughs> you know what the great part was, and we were talking about this earlier today uh, with a couple of the guys, is uh, BB's conversation today, and this shows you just where this administration's going and why I think that mainstream media is in more trouble than they think. BB Netanyahu's at the White House, which we can talk about that uh, in itself is major news. Um, with President Trump, they start taking questions Who's the first network? And I'm going to ask you and see if you have an answer. Who's the first network you think they took a question from? It was not SHR. No, we didn't have anyone there. Who else? Oh, it should have been. Fox. No. No? BBC. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Google that with the safe search off. It's a organization. I believe it's called CSN, the Christian um, uh, Services Network. It is a smaller net-based yeah, Christian News, thank you. <coughs> it is a smaller uh, um, website-based Christian News Network who had a reporter there, and that was the first question that they took from. So uh, you, you're seeing MSN spiral more and more, which, um, you know, uh, uh, somebody said to me earlier today, too, is, well, why do you think they're going after him so bad? I'm like, that's not the point. Mm-hmm. The point is if they were doing their job, they'd be getting questions. Yeah, and it would be okay um, when you have smaller networks like our size, yeah. who are in a White House press pool taking questions and and getting them answered. There's a reason for that, um, and, and it really uh, shows MSM. As I said earlier, when they were attacking Trump for this versus reporting what actually happened, and even Wapo. This is uh, the Washington Post for releasing that information. Yep. This is what happens when you try to play gutcha media with somebody who is much better at gutcha business. Yep. Because it, it didn't even have to say anything. Just looked over CNN, MSNBC, uh, Christian News Services. Yeah, please. Go ahead. Oh, wait, what? Well, I'm, I'm MSNBC. Shh, shh, shh. They're talking. Don't be rude. That's exactly what happened. This is a direct referendum on mainstream media. Just like this whole election was a direct referendum on mainstream media. And even the coverage since is still a referendum on mainstream media. The biggest problem we have in this country isn't even liberals, in my opinion. It's mainstream media that's run by liberals. That is destroying the true information to the people. I think that's a bigger problem than the Democratic Party. But that's why we're growing, Sean. I agree wholeheartedly, but not fast enough. Yeah, we have jobs. <laughs> <laughs> we're conservative and we work. <laughs> we have jobs. Uh, yeah, because I've seen MSNBC. Those people obviously aren't working. Obviously not. <laughs> Oh, Joe wants to know when we're going to do the... When uh, we're going to get a Skype spot? Yeah. We're working on it. We'll work on it. We're we'll working work on it. it. Hey, we're up against a break. We come back. We're going to merge a couple segments into this uh, last 30 minutes. So stick around because it's going to go quick and it's going to go fast and you're going to have to hold on to your asses. Right here on literally. the Kids Radio Show. No, literally. SHR and send Media us Network. a picture. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network.
Hey, it's Sean from the Sackheads Radio Show. Also one of the owners here at the SHR Media Network. Are you opinionated? Have you ever wanted to do your own show? Have you ever heard somebody like the Sackheads and go, yeah, I could probably do that better? Well, now's your chance. Send me a five-minute clip at sackheadsradio at gmail.com. And maybe you can be part of the SHR Broadcasting Team. Sackheadsradio at gmail.com. Times are dark. The people are misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation looking for direction needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, Pundit Press Radio, and YouTube through the SHR Media page for a different kind of commentary on the unpleasant blind guy. Because the truth is not always pleasant. In a world controlled by corrupt politicians. You got a business. That, you didn't build that. A team of ordinary men emerge from the ashes to give voice to the voiceless and hope. Sackhead Sean. Dude, I'm not saying Cap is stupid, bro. Sackhead Clint. All good friends of ours usually show, show up drunk. drunk. Also starring Socko as the producer. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. They are the Sackheads Radio Show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific on SHR Media. The bloviating Zeppelin. He's Bigfooted enough radio shows to last a lifetime, courtesy of Jean, Clint, Ken, and Jersey Joe. Now it's time for him to waddle on his own two feet via the glorious SHR media. Gird thy loins for the bloviating Zeppelin's berserk Bobcat Saloon. Coming soon to Ossicles. Near you, Excelsior. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network. And welcome back to the Sackheads Radio Show, live on the SHR Media Network. We only got 30 minutes left of the show this week, folks, so it is go time. Let's start off with California evacuations real quick. And a taste of crow. And a taste of crow. So in typical California fashion, um, they didn't spend any money on water projects because of environmentalists. And uh, a, an emergency spillway at one of the largest dams uh, broke. <laughs> Failed. It's no big deal. <laughs> and 188,000 people were emergency evacuated. Yes. Down into Sacramento. Yeah, yeah. And beyond. And beyond. And beyond. Here's the amazing part about this. Back in 2005, the state government was informed that perhaps there may be a little bit of an issue with the emergency spillway next to the... Uh, uh, Calusa uh, Dam. Uh, no, um, Oroville. Oroville Dam Oroville in Calusa Dam. County. Um, for those who don't know, the emergency spillway is for excessive Emergencies. overflow. It's not a designed spillway. Um, but the concern was exactly what happened, that if it was used too much, the hills say it would erode and potentially add a uh, uh, the risk of the dam erupting and killing everybody in its path. And it's an emergency spillway, so it's designed for when it gets Over, or, uh, overfilled. Uh, overfilled. Which we're in a drought right now, um, so I don't know how that happened, but that's the oh, you know, there. Oh, you know why that happened? Because it's a record rainfall year, and we have no other way to catch the water 
in California oh, because right. we haven't added any new water projects since the 70s, which is why we were in the drought in the first place, and we waste billions of gallons to save the little gotcha. smelty fish. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so you asked. I just had to answer. No, no, you were 100% right. Spring I'm glad. up, the, get everybody else uh, up to speed. So basically, we're in a drought because California is at fault, and then we were told we had to ration water because... California was at fault, right? and now we still can't add more water because of a fish, and we're going to continue to waste billions of gallons, and we can't work on water projects because California um, and environment. Anytime I say California, I think environment, and we had a failure. Go ahead, Sean. So where does, you know, that money go? Well, let's see. We have the special train to nowhere, as Jane just pointed out in the chat room. Uh, this beautiful train goes from downtown uh, uh, Modesto. I believe? Uh, Fresno. Fresno. Yes, Fresno to Bakersfield. To Bakersfield. Uh-huh. Look, look uh, that's a huge... Listen, people are dying to go between yes. those two towns on a regular basis. Yep. Um, so that got a lot of money that, you know, we didn't need for water storage and to fix the problems. Well, with the environmentalists, dam. they wouldn't let us build anymore. Um, uh, illegals. Illegals. H- how much money went to illegals in the yep. state? Yeah, um, a lot. My question would have been, how much money did we spend in the state to house illegals in prison? Uh-huh. Oh, how much are we spending on Eric Holder to yes, fight Trump? Absolutely. And the beauty of all of this is Jerry Brown had to call the White House. <laughs> it, you know, it's a lot like the high school girl who, I hate him, I can't stand him, I hate him, I hate him. Hey, it's me again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Governor Moonbeam had to pick up the old rotary dial telephone from Sacramento and call Washington, to which he was told, uh, yeah, the president's busy. What do you need? Um, <laughs> no. And amazingly, for a state that just joked about taking off from the country and trying to remove itself through Cal Exit. All of a sudden, they're asking the feds for help pretty damn quick. Trump's been in office, what, uh, less than a month? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, the state government had to go begging the federal government to help. And, of course, the federal government did help. Yes, they did. Um, of course they provided did. Provided a whole... A <laughs> but how big... How much... How... What jackasses do they look like? Like, literally, the day before... He's not my president. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I don't. Uh, he's horrible. This guy. Uh, uh, he's just. He's a monster, and we're not going to do anything. Yeah, please help me. Can we have money. Yeah, I need money. All of a sudden, you, the moment. You of know part. what it is? Okay, so here's. Let me set the example. This is like the parolee that asks the cop for help. For help. Yes. After he just tried to kill that cop. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the parolee. Well, no, after the anti-police, hang on, hang on. This is the parolee, after an anti-police march. Yes, this is the parolee that goes to an anti-police march, pepper sprays the cop in the face, runs away, <laughs> and then gets mugged and goes to that cop and asks for help. Well, like, hey, I, I was trying to buy drugs from that guy and he robbed me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what just happened. <laughs> Oh, uh, the good news is, is they're starting to make headway on dam repairs. The evacuations have been lifted. Were you just cussing? No. They're trying to make evacuations on dam repairs? Um, Commas are important. <laughs> uh, uh, the evacuations have been lifted. People are still under a warning. Uh, we're supposed to get an ass ton of rain this coming weekend as well, starting and I, tonight. That's, actually, that's an actual unit. Hydrological measure. term. Yeah. Um, I've heard them say that, the meteorology department. We're getting an ass load of rain this we weekend, We actually folks. learned that when we went to meteorology school um, yeah. in before with that one-hour video we watched right. when we were learning how to be journalists. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, I thought we nailed it. We did. Um, so I, I had my notes right here. Ass ton, shit ton. Um, Fuck very, them. Yeah, very specific differences. Um, uh, an ass ton is going to be three to six inches of rain. Yes. Potentially coming in the next six days. Yes. Um, um, or a white person. Right. Uh, amount of rain. A white person what? amount of rain. Because <laughs> a fuck ton is nine to 12 inches, and right. that is a black no, person amount of rain. Right, right, right. Uh, right. We think. We, we're pretty sure. We're pretty sure. Right, um, <laughs> So... Um, but yeah, so there's some people going back. Some people say they aren't going back, um, and it, it's just a complete disaster. They've had to drop a, a, a lot of water out of that dam that can now not be saved for the summertime. Um, well, no, it can now not be wasted uh, into the Pacific to flush the delta for the smelt. 
three inches fish. Right. Where there's like, what, 15 of them? Yeah. Okay. Good. Not even indigenous to the Delta. <laughs> Not even indigenous. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I know it's this the best is how part. how crazy California is. <laughs> Not even indigenous. Uh, it's the Delta smelt. Oh, it's from here. Oh no, God no, 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 no. 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 It, it's actually we think it's from Vermont. It's just it will protect any illegal that we could possibly find. <laughs> <laughs> Fish. We don't give a shit. Everything's protected. <laughs> <laughs> Except uh, the, uh, California, where even illegal alien fish are protected. <laughs> <laughs> what about constitutional rights? No, that's the only thing we do. We'll, yeah, we'll, no. we'll fuck up in a minute. No, constitution, so, <laughs> not the supreme law of the land. <laughs> <laughs> it's a living, breathing document, unlike your freedoms that aren't. Oh, um, God, that's hilarious. Yeah, we're just doing what we can. Gosh. I'm sorry, you sounded like the ambulance chasing hack there for a second when you said leaving breathing document. <laughs> so where to start off with the world going batshit crazy? I Oh. That has nothing to do with anything. I w I I, I kinda wanna save my favorite story for last. Okay. So let's start with the Russian spy ship. Okay. Off the coast of Connecticut. Are you kidding me right now? Uh <laughs> Off the coast of Connecticut, um, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the super Russian spy ship popped up. So secret that we just know what it is. <laughs> Less than 30 miles off the coast of Connecticut, which is one of the biggest sub bases in the country. Yeah. Um, and more recently, armed Russian warplanes carried out a mock attack on a U.S. ship. Th this spy ship is specifically designed... Um, to listen at lengths, pick up uh, audio, radio traffic, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, Monitor our, our sonar system. Yep. It's called the Leonov. It's a Vishna-class spy ship. Bless you. Um, uh, thank you. <clears throat> and so that's an issue as well as the USS Porter being in the Black Sea, where it had three um, Russian aircraft uh, uh, SU-24s come with 200 yards at a speed of 500 knots doing mock runs. How did, those, how did they not get shot down? If they're armed and they're coming in within 200 yards, how do you not shoot that bastard down? Right. That's what I... Uh, no, seriously. I know. Like, how, how is that captain not up on dereliction charges for failing to protect his crew? There's no way they could have reacted if those, if those weapons loosed. Well, and more importantly, what would the Russians say? Uh, we were doing a mock uh, 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 attack run and they bombed us. Oh, wait, so you were doing a mock run on an American ship, and you got blown out of the sky? Yeah, what the hell? And we and, and you had weapons on your plane? Yeah. Yeah, we don't give a shit. You know, but, you know, reparations for... We don't give a shit. Don't do it again. This is plain and simple. Do not do it again. Same thing with the... I'll tell you right now. That Russian spy ship should have an entire carrier fleet surrounding it right now. Hey, what you doing? Yeah. Hey, guys. We don't have any weapons. We do. We're just here to make sure you're not lost. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, that was an update on an earlier uh, show. I thought that was up for the Russian, uh, the Russian planes. Hey, uh, listen, everyone who thinks that Putin and Trump are all cozy, cozy, and lovey dubby. Mm -mm. I don't believe that. I mean, no. Trump just respects him as a leader, right? And respects certain things about him, and that's fine. And this is, I think, today Putin uh, um, trying to see what Russia, uh, what Trump's response is going to be to this sort of jackassery. Uh, there was you, other jackassery. You that also happened. had the Iranian general, yeah, who visited uh, um, Moscow, which is a violation of a UN uh, um, uh, some sort of bullshit, edict. blah 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 edict. Um, which states that the communication gap between those two countries can't exist on such level. It happened anyhow. So now you have the Iranians snuggling up with the Russians, and the Russians starting to antagonize us. And it's going to be interesting in the next 48 hours to see what the White House's response is going to actually be. I say a strong response. Hey, uh, listen, you do that shit with the planes again? Coming out of the sky. Don't yeah. do it. I'm just telling you now. Don't do it. Yeah. 
I'm not threatening you. I'm telling I'm, you. I'm that, just telling you that how can we differentiate between uh, you flying really fast at us for practice and you flying really fast at us for real? Right. We're going to fucking shoot you down. Right. And it's going to be nasty. <coughs> um, and we're, we're not going to do it. We're going to do it with extreme prejudice. Same thing with the ship. Hey, uh, we catch you in, intercepting some of If you do anything that we deem a threat to our national security, there's going to be torpedoes in the water. We'll fish your sailors out, but there's going to be torpedoes no, we in the water. No, we won't. No, we will. No, we won't. That's the convention, Geneva Convention. We will. We'll, we'll fish and them we out. We want room. <laughs> Look, our lifeboats didn't pass inspection, but we had to muster quickly to go shoot your asses out of the water. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh! So I, I North I, Korea did something this week. Oh, let's get on to North Korea, ladies and gentlemen. Is it time? Or did Iran do something else? Oh, uh, well, no. North Korea test fired at a rocket. Um, Iran test uh, test fired last week or a week before that. Uh, North Korea test. Uh, tested a rocket which South Korean said showed significant advancement in their abilities and technology. Um, so that's kind of a scary Here's thing. Here's how I hope the meeting with Netanyahu went and Trump. Netanyahu, uh, we need to do something about Iran. Trump, hey, you fuck him up, we'll, uh, we got your back. Okay. That's how I hope that meeting went. <laughs> You know, it, here's how the meeting actually went. Is the, uh, Trump asked for him to slow down on the settlements um, and essentially said we'd support whatever treaty they came up with. Unlike the last president and administration who said, oh, if we don't like the treaty, uh, we're not going to support it and we'll do whatever we can to stop it. Um, I, I read this administration today as saying, hey, whatever you and Palestine agree to, we will support and help you out however we can. Um I thought it was amazing to see BB at the uh, uh, White House and the way they were um, was really kind of awesome. So, all right, good. We get all that crap out of the way. North Korea. Do it. Do, Do it. it. Do <laughs> I get so excited with North Korea. A woman has been arrested in Malaysia. <laughs> Even though there's a second suspect that's also been arrested in the last 24 minutes. Uh, I believe it was in Malaysia. <laughs> it doesn't even matter where. I don't who care. Who cares? King Jom Nam, what? who was Bless the el uh, eldest son of Kim Jong Il, who was supposed to take over the country, um, uh, was called the Tiny General. Um, <laughs> And but he was tall, which was weird. Fell out of graces after trying to use a fake passport to get into Japan to go to Disneyland. He all of a sudden became the bastard stepchild and was removed from the country. Has been somewhat of a critic every once in a while against his brother, Kim Jong-un, who is the supreme leader of brother North Korea. Son. It's his brother. Okay. Half-brother. So, <laughs> he's getting out of plane. And two women come up with poison needles, run up to him, begin stabbing him repeatedly, and he dies. All intelligence from South Korea and, and local authorities point that these were North Korean operatives sent there on an assassination mission to kill him, much like his uncle who was killed last year by hands of an anti-aircraft carrier. Oh, um, I believe uh, we did get a message that the only words that were said between the women and Kim Jong Nam were "hero," and then they began stabbing repeatedly. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you can't make this shit up. North Korea sent two women with poison needles into an airport to chase down this guy and stab him, and we allow them to test fire missiles without any sort of retribution. This is a problem. I love this story. Not that the he died, but the fact that of all the different ways that they could have assassinated him. How did this conversation take place? I, that's what I want to know. Right. Who is the who is the brainchild behind this? Uh, we must uh, kill my brother. Mm, good idea. Uh, poison in his drink. Too no. subtle. Uh, let's see. Shoot him. 
No, that won't work either. And I aircraft gun. Uh, it's a little overused at this point. Stabby needles. Wait, what? Stabby needles and those two broads that work at the front counter. <laughs> at the gift shop? No one will ever see him coming. This will never work. Flash forward to the news today. It worked. <laughs> North Korean. This is... I can't believe this. I... <laughs> Who does this? Little Kim. <laughs> Little Kim. Little Kim does this. He is absolutely batshit crazy. I, I I thought he maxed out by strapping people to a board and no. blasting them with an anti-aircraft gun. No, I literally see him eating like a big old fudgy cake, right? <laughs> He's sitting back in his chair, big old fudgy cake all over his cheeks. They're also discussing stabby needles being a nickname. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Yes. And he's he, he, eating and they're talking about killing this guy he says i want i want uh, two broads <laughs> needles and needles <laughs> and <it> takes a- <laughs> this is actually the most ineffective way to kill a human being ever mm. no i believe you're wrong and now because he wasn't wrong he, they have to own it how many North Korean uh, 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 defectors or anything else are going to be killed with stabby needles. Oh, yeah. It's going to happen like crazy. I, I, listen, you go back to assassination attempts. Was it the president of the country of Georgia or another, uh, uh, maybe it was Lithuania, I can't remember, who the Russian spy walked up and stabbed him in the leg with the bottom of his cane that had poison in it. You remember that story from about yes. 10, 15 years ago? Yep. But at least he wasn't trying to get caught. These two women ran at him attack mode style from what I've read, maybe two needles in each hand and just started going full melee on his ass. I mean, I, I just want everyone to understand this is a leader of a foreign country who ordered this attack. The guy has nukes that were given to them by the Clintons. Yes. And they've advanced technology. Yes. That was allowed by the Clintons. Yes. And, and we're okay with this. No. <laughs> no, 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 we're not. <laughs> no, we're not, Sean. I'm just frightened by this a little bit. <laughs> Oh, this! I hate to say it, it made my week. It made my week. I'm surprised that wasn't your surprise Clint segment. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I figured you had heard about it already. I hadn't. Uh, really? Yes. Oh, man. Let's see. Uh, what else didn't we get to? We kind of got caught up on everything this week for once. For once. Uh, it was magical, to say the very, very least. Um... I do have, oh, I did find a picture online. You know, I love the interwebs. Because only that will people actually announce their stupidity uh, so easily for people to see. Um, The war on women. Let's cover this for a little bit. There is (laughs) a, Ken, pay attention. Um, (laughs) There's a like, don't like, or like equal support picture going around on Facebook right now of a girl who is allegedly told not to come to the country because of a Muslim ban. However, this young lady is extremely well endowed and has a low-cut shirt and glasses. And this is the person that they chose to get the attention. In other words, the left is trying to use hot chicks to destroy the travel ban, but yet claim it's the right... It's not a travel ban. (laughs) It's a 90-day freeze for seven countries. But to claim the right has the war on women. That kills me. Um, And then this other picture that popped up on the... It's involved with the hashtag my identity is valid. Oh, God. It's a picture of... Do you remember Pat from SNL? Yes. Kind of looks like Pat from SNL. It says, my name is Andy, and I'm a non-binary person. Please call me they. The hell does that mean? People often call me he or she, even after I've asked them to call me they. When you misgender someone, you hurt their sense of identity. Ask people for their preferred pronouns and use them. Prevent non-binary violence. 
What? And there's a picture of Pat. No, I'm sorry, Andy. Which is even better, because it's just Pat had a girlfriend, a boyfriend named Andy at one point during that segment. Uh, this is insanity to me. Well, hey, well it, gets even, it gets even more insane, because California is trying to pass a law to create a new sex for the driver's license. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm getting it. It wouldn't be male or female. What is it? I, it's like male, female, or... Uh, Whatever, I, male, I, female, or I'm picking who it. Who knows? I'm picking it. I keep saying at this point, I want to walk into the DMV and be able to go. Yeah, you need to update my race and gender. I am a black female. Yes, and you cannot argue with me because that offends me. You cannot, uh, uh, or even better, I am a uh, 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 non-binary Asian American. Or, or Asian, doesn't matter. And just every couple of weeks, go in and update it. Yeah, it'll cost you, what, 25 bucks at the same time? And see how many copies of a license you can get with how many different races and genders on it you could get. And then go as crazy as you possibly can. Oh, I'm a uh, non-binary elephant. <laughs> Give me my license. Um, that wasn't a snout. <laughs> <laughs> but this is absolutely ridiculous folks you're either born with a penis or you're not and that's not like how ken would say it like you're either awesome and have a penis or you, you don't no you're either born w- with a penis or you you aren't there are some people that are born with both there are some anomalies that occur out there some born with none yeah i get that 99 percent of the people in this world are born either with junk or no junk that is who you are. I will even if you pay the money to have your junk chopped off and turn into no junk. I can even have that conversation about uh, okay, so technically you've changed your gender. Um, but I don't agree with it, but I'll have the conversation because at least you've done. But to just walk up and say, "Oh, I am no longer considered a male. I'm considered a they." First of all, I'm not calling somebody a they. It was like when uh, George Costanza used to refer to himself in the first person. Or the third person. It's the summer of George! Like, it's ridiculous. I'm not calling you they. I'm calling you he or she, sir or ma'am. I don't give a shit what you say you think you might be. Science has said that you are either a ma'am or a sir. That's it. Yeah. And I thought we believed in science. Especially the left. Uh, environmental uh, science. What about male and female? Ah, whatever you feel. Wait a minute. There's definitive science about males and females. No, there's not. I feel like I'm this. <laughs> what? <laughs> why is this even... Uh, why? So, I, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to be Googling, but I, I, I see a couple words in the chat room there, Melanie, and I'm afraid to Google any of them, really. Safe search off. Safe search off. So that is the insanity that is still being pushed by the left. Clint, they, I'm, I'm, I don't know what else to call you anymore. I have to call you. Uh, no, I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a her. I'm a she. I'm a he. I'm a she. I'm a. The You're a shim? I? I'm a shim. No, I'm a man. I mean, what? Wait, ready? Watch. <laughs> uh, from where I stand, it's half a man. Yeah. All right, folks. <laughs> oh, now I get the micro penis. Thank you, Melanie. I understand there. what you're typing in the chat room. Uh, very, very nice. Folks, that's it for the Sackheads Radio Show live on the SHR Media Network. That is it for this week. We will be back next week at 11 p.m. Pacific time. If we don't get shut down by the owners of SHR Media. They say 8 p.m. Pacific time, 11 on the East Coast time. Um, Make sure you check out all the great shows here on the SHR Media Network. Starting uh, tomorrow morning, bright and early, and going through all day. And we're actually going to be adding a weekend show here very shortly, and we're pretty excited about that. A regular live weekend show as well as the great show like The Unpleasant Impre- Blind Guy. I can't even say it tonight. God, I'm exhausted, and I apologize for that, folks. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next Wednesday. And don't forget, call her they. Call her they. Call her they. And micropenis. Uh, and Ken... Can-
to the no, 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 yeah, to the no, no. The best late night conservative talk show in America, Black Kids Radio. And listen, there are no people better on the air to give you the best in conservative talk than Sackhead Sean and Sackhead Clint. Uh, and uh, we're working on the immigration papers for a certain other guy who happens to work here, too. <laughs> <laughs> for those who are tuning in around the world to the best in late night conservative talk, Sackhead's Radio. Hark, 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 dude. Hark, 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 dude. Radio. Hark, 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 dude. Hark, 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 dude. Radio. In America. In America. In America. In the And in this web was a large, I'm pretty sure it was the biggest spider I've ever seen. <laughs>